guys, Dave Cadbury at the Pathfinder School. I'm out here on the back porch of my cabin today. And we got a lot of snow coming into southeast Ohio today. We're supposed to get, uh, I don't know, somewhere between three and five inches this morning. And it's supposed to compound over the next couple days. Temperatures are supposed to be dropping. It's going to be great bushcraft weather. What I wanted to do today was I wanted to continue with our series, No Map, No Problem, and discuss a little bit more about judging height and distance real quick. I had a question on the last video from my gentleman asking, why would I want to know the height of a tree? Well, the simple answer to that is, the height of a tree can become important in two ways very quickly. Number one, if you're going to fell a tree, you want to understand what the safe zone of that is for that tree to fall. So you need to know how high it is to know how far out it's going to fall into the terrain. Is it going to hang up in the canopy of another tree and compound your problems when it comes to bucking that tree down to firewood? Is it going to reach across something if you're felling it to use for a shimmy bridge or a handrail to get across a swift water crossing? You want to ensure that that tree is long enough to get across that obstacle. We talked about how to measure the distance across an obstacle as well in that video. So those are two scenarios where you'd want to know the height of a tree very quickly. And I showed you a couple ways to do that. Okay guys, while we're out here today, let's talk about one more easy method of judging the height of a tree. We should be able to use our axe to judge the height of a tree, even if we don't have increment markers written on the back of it. When you buy an axe, an axe that fits you properly, that's used to be a felling axe. Now I'm not talking about your little bushcrafting axe. I'm talking about an axe that you buy for felling trees. The rule of thumb is that that axe goes from your armpit to your cupped hand. To find a measuring device to measure a tree, you really need something that goes from your fist to your nose. This distance is going to be fairly equal to that distance. If I swing this around to the front and pick this up, the blade's hitting me in the nose and my fist is right at the end. That means that this is the height I need to measure a tree. And What I do with that is I'll hold that axe up like this in my fist and I will walk backwards until the bottom of the tree is at the top of my fist and the top of the tree is at the top of my axe. If I've walked back far enough to have that entire tree captured between here and here, I should be the same distance from that tree as it is high within you know a few feet or meters. I would always factor on the low side. Again, if I'm trying to fell a tree and I think that tree is you know 30 meters high, then I'm going to assume that I need an area 40 meters long to fell that tree. Okay, so first let's talk about the concepts that we're going to have to understand to be able to factor longer distances. We need to understand what our pace count is, and we need to understand how to use our compass to find a differential angle. And we talked about that yesterday, or in our other video a couple days ago, when we were finding a 45 degree offset across some type of danger area or some type of swift water crossing so that we could figure out that distance. Now, if you are closer to an object, it will be much easier to get that 45 degree angle away from the object than it will if the object is a long ways away. That's going to decrease that angle that you're walking across. You're not going to be able to walk as far to get that 45 degree angle possibly when the object is a long ways away because you may have a short ridge line, a short area that you can walk or something like that. So you're trying to find that 45 degree angle but you may not be able to do that over the short distance or you may only be able to do it on one side and you're not going to be able to verify it on both sides like we talked about the other day. So we need to understand how to find that differential angle which just means the difference in the reading from here to here. This angle difference from here, okay, is our differential that we're looking for. And we talked about that in the video on how to factor distance across a danger area. So those two concepts should be pretty familiar. The next thing that we need to understand is we need to understand a tangent table. And a tangent table, in its most simple terms, basically for a triangle is, if I have a triangle, I always want a 90 degree angle here, which means I need a 45 degree angle here, that's going to give me, if this angle is 45, that means this and this are going to be equal distances. A and B will be equal distances if this is a 45 degree angle. And that's the concept that we've used in everything that we've done so far. 
what a tangent is going to do is it's going to help you figure out what this length is with an angle other than 45 degrees. So you're going to have a known distance here that's going to be a pace count and you're going to have a known angle here in degrees. And you're going to, to combine that pace count with an angle and a tan value or a tangent called a tan for short and that's going to help you use simple math to figure out this distance and that's what we're going to talk about today. Okay, so the easiest way to do this is to copy this formula into your notebook and if you keep it there then you'll understand how to do this and it'll walk you through it very simple. And We're going to walk through a problem here in a minute but you're going to have a magnetic azimuth which is going to be A. You're going to have a magnetic azimuth that's going to be B. And this magnetic azimuth is going to be a differential azimuth. So if I take a degree reading in front of me and I walk off to the left or to the right, I want the difference in degrees it is left, the difference it is degrees right from my center line. So I'm not going to write the actual azimuth down, I'm going to write down the difference. And that's going to be magnetic azimuth A, magnetic azimuth B. The next thing I need to know is I need to know my pace count to A and my pace count to B. That's going to give me my total pace count if I add them together. Let me put another box right here on the bottom, right here, and that's our total pace count. All right. Then we're going to take A, subtract it from B is going to give us C, which is going to give us the difference between those two angles that we took. Sounds a little complicated now. It'll get easier in a minute. 90 degrees, remember, that's what we're looking for. Okay? We're going to take 90 degrees, we're going to subtract C from it, and that's going to give us a number, which is going to equal D. We're going to take the tangent of D off of our tan table. We're going to talk about that in a minute as well. And we're going to times that by our total pace count, and that's going to equal our distance in paces. Okay? Our distance in paces. Then if we take our paces divided by our pace count, that's going to equal our distance in meters. Because we know what our pace count is. Okay, so let's walk through this on this board just like we would with our formula we wrote down in our book. What we want to know is we want to know what our range is here across this ridge. In case old Mr. Big Buck comes to walking across here, we want to know if we have to adjust elevation when we take a shot across this ridge. If we walk across that ravine and up to that ridge by pace counting, it's not going to equal the distance straight line across. If you remember right, when you figure your pace count, you figure it uphill, downhill, uneven terrain, even terrain, flat terrain, mud, snow, all of that stuff so that you can average your pace count. What we're worried about here is a straight line distance, so it would be your pace count walking on flat, even level ground. You're not going to be able to get that walking downhill and uphill. You could average it maybe, but it's not going to be as accurate as this method is going to be. So what we're going to do is, and then obviously you'd have to walk over to here, which means you disturb the area. So we're going to hunt from here, we're not going to go over here at all. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a compass reading from where we're standing or where we want to hunt to a known object on the other side like a tree. Then we're going to pace count or walk left and right however many comfortable paces it is to get a differential reading of angle. As far as we can walk, the further we can walk the better and still keep that thing in our sights without going downhill or off the side or anything like that. So in this case, we'll say that we walked 30, meter, 30 paces in this direction, and we've got a 60 degree difference between the reading here and the reading here. Then we walked the other direction, we were only able to walk 12 paces, and we got a 30 degree difference in the reading from here to here. If we have our pace count and our degree readings, that's all we need, as long as we have our tangent table written down to figure out what our range is here. So let's walk through that real fast in a formula. Okay, so obviously I've erased all of my boxes for my formula here, but I pretty much know what they are. So 
what we're going to do is we're going to add our total pace count, which is 42 in this case. Okay, 42 paces. That's important to understand. Then what we're going to do is we're going to subtract these two degree readings from each other so that we get a value or a difference. And the difference in this case is 30 degrees. 30 minus 60 equals 30. We're going to subtract that from 90 degrees, and that's going to give us 60. What we need is we need the tan value. Get a better marker in my hand here, guys. None of these markers are working real well right now in this cold weather. What we need is we need the tan value of 60. And the way we find that is we look up our tan table that we've got written in our book. It will go from 1 to 90. Remember, 90 is our optimum degree reading. So it will go from 1 to 90. It will give you a value next to all of those numbers. So we find out what the tan value of 60 is, and it happens to be 1.7. So then what we're going to do is we're going to take that 1.7 tan value and we're going to multiply that by our total paces which was 42 and that's going to give us a number and that number is going to give us our total paces from here to here and it works out to 71.4 71.4 paces from here to here now if I know my flat line pace count for 100 meters is 63, I can simply divide 60, divide 71.4 by 63 to get the amount of meters it is from here to here. But for this purpose, it's pretty simple. I know that 63 paces is my 100 meter pace count, and it's just over that at 71.4 paces. So I can figure that the difference between 63 and 71 is about 9 nine paces so about nine meters so it's about a hundred I think my math is right on that I'm sure somebody will correct me if I'm wrong at any rate so it's about a hundred and nine meters from here to here so that tells me what I need to do elevation wise if I know my gun shoots one inch low at a hundred yards I need to raise my aim point up one inch aiming at a big game target on this side that's one method or one scenario that you could use this simple formula in to factor distance if you didn't want to go over there to that side and disturb the area but you wanted to know what that distance was. Okay let's look at a scenario where something may be further away than that. Okay, Maybe we see a fire tower off in the distance we want to walk to but we're not sure how far that fire tower away is. It could make it difference between we're going to leave right now we got plenty of daylight left or we're going to wait until tomorrow morning remember again it's a straight line distance you're not taking into consideration contour in the terrain so this is going to be very generalistic as far as distance goes but it will give you a pretty good idea so let's say we take our reading straight line distance to the fire tower with our compass we walked 25 paces this way and we got an 18 degree differential we walk 32 paces this way and we got a 22 degree differential. Again, as long as we have our tan table written down in our notebook, we can now figure out approximately what this distance is in paces and convert that into meters. Okay, so let's work this formula real quick. We know our total paces are 57. The difference between 18 and 22 degrees is 4. If we subtract that from 90 degrees, it gives us 86. So we need the tan value of 86. In this case, the tan value of 86 is 11.4. 11.4 times our paces, which was 57 gives us 649.8 paces. That's our total paces, 649.8. Now, if we want to factor this and figure out how many meters that is, again, straight line distance, we can average our pace count. If we have a straight line distance on our pace count, we're good to go. Again, we'll use 63 with this. If we divide this number by 63 
it gives us 10.31. If we then times that number, that 10.31, by 100 meters, it is 1,031 meters to this fire tower straight line distance. So from what we can see, it's just over a kilometer. That gives us a lot of information. If I was in really uneven terrain, I would at least double that distance. I'd say, okay, it's one kilometer straight line distance. I know I've got uneven terrain up and down. That thing's going to be two kilometers away. That's going to make my decision on whether I'm going to walk here now, walk here later, or how long I think it's going to take me to walk there to begin with. Okay, guys, well, I'm Dave Caber at the Pathfinder School. I appreciate you joining me for this video today. I hope this wasn't too complicated. If you write that formula down in your book, you write that tan table down in your book, it can be found anywhere on the Internet. It'll make it real simple for you. I appreciate your views. I appreciate your support. I thank you for everything you do for me, for my school, for my family, everyone that's affiliated with the Pathfinder School and Self-Reliance Outfitters. I'll be back with another video as soon as I can. Thanks, guys.